Welcome to Calvary Live, where we're going to encourage you about the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and the power of the cross. We hope that this message will encourage you, to impact you, to know as you enjoy this message today that there's power in the preaching of the cross. We'd like to ask Jordan to come up and stand so that people can see Jordan and get his rewards. Jordan got uh, six and under, 43, third place. And then the big, I think you may get some help to get this. This feels like it's over 43 pounds. So I'm asking his mother to come and help him with this. Amen. So we would like to present this to Jordan with his mother carrying it to the 2011 Cliff Clean Tulsa National, six and under, 43 pounds, third place. Amen. Wonderful heavy eagle. Let's give Jordan another round of applause. Amen. Every Christian ought to stand up and testify For God I live, for God I die You ought to clap your hands and pat your feet Even though you're walking along the street Now if you got it, show some sign mm -hmm. Listen, you ought to fall down on your knees and pray Say, Lord I thank you for one more day it's mighty nice to go to God and kneel I wouldn't have religion that I couldn't feel Now if you got it, show some sign mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every Christian ought to stand up and testify For God I live, for God I die You ought to clap your hands and pat your feet Even though you're walking Along the street Now if you got it Show some sign It's been a while It's been a while You may not oh, I may not I may be able to sing like Paul I said hi and he hurt and he died well i want the world to know that i know the man if i couldn't say a word i just wave my hand now if you got it show some sign well you may not Whoa. i may not i may be able to preach like Paul. i said i and he hurt and he died well i want the world to know that i know the man if i couldn't say a word i just wave my hand now if you got it show some sign well you may not oh, i may not i said I I said, I said, I said, I said, I do you really love him? I love the Lord. Do you really love him? I love the Lord. He heard, he heard, he heard, late one Sunday morning, he heard, late one Saturday night, he heard, late one Sunday morning. He heard late one Saturday night. He heard and then he died. Well, I want the world to know that I know the man. If I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. Now, if you got it, show some sign. Well, 
You may not I may not I said I, I love the Lord. 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 Do you really love Him? I love the Lord. Do you really love Him? I love the Lord. He heard. He heard. He heard. He heard. He heard. He heard late one Saturday night. He heard early one Sunday morning. He heard late one Saturday night. He heard early one Sunday morning. He heard late one Saturday night. He heard early one Sunday morning. He heard late one Saturday night. He heard. And then he died. Well, I want the world to know that I know the man. If I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. Now, if you got it, I said, I said, if you got it, you ought to show some sign. 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 time religion show some sign if I can't do anything I can wave my hand clap my hand how many of y'all can show some sign today got old time religion amen amen amen, amen. 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 God is an awesome God amen Standing, open your Bibles to Genesis the 37th chapter that's the very first book in the Bible Genesis chapter 37 Genesis chapter 37 amen Genesis chapter 37 amen amen Genesis chapter 37 as you're standing with allow those that's going to children's church to be excused those that are 11 and under 11 and under 11 and under 11 and under amen Amen. 11 and under. As you're opening your Bibles to Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, and then also Corinthians, the second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number 7. Amen. We're going to read both of those passages of Scripture. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Genesis chapter 37, Genesis chapter 37, and it reads, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Once again, let me draw your attention while your Bibles are still open to first, uh, Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Heavenly Father God, I thank you that I may decrease so you can increase. God, I want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, because you are so worthy to be praised. God, I thank you right now, God, that you would get all the glory, God. I thank you, God, that we would have an ear to hear what thus says the Lord. God, I thank you right now, God, that as we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, that you would have your way in today's message, God. And God, I want to say thank you right now, God, that I continue to decrease so you can increase. And God, we want to be careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. To look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, a journey of faith. 
as we deal with this text again today from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and as he begins to let us know, the writer Paul, that it's walk by faith and not by sight, and I'm giving a cross-reference scripture of Genesis, the 37th chapter, beginning with the 37th chapter, and then just walking through the book of Genesis. Now, how many of you all have a dream? I tell you that everyone in here ought to have a dream. Everyone in here ought to have a God-given dream. God dreams for us is a seed waiting to blossom. Can I say that again? God's dream to us is a seed waiting to blossom. Now let me ask one more time. How many of us have a dream? See, now, now understand this. We might catch ourselves talking about a dream house, a dream job, or even a dream relationship. Anybody ever had a fantasy dream growing up? You know, we used to have this game when we were traveling. We would always say, I key lock that house. Anybody ever key lock somebody else's house? Anybody ever key lock somebody? I key lock that car. And then somebody would get smart and say, I key lock the whole parking lot over there. I don't, anybody in here have a dream? You know, a dream that you can dream. Because if you are one of God's children, then you have to dream outside the box. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have a dream. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King had a dream, and you know, his dream still yet lives on as we have celebrated just on last Sunday. We celebrated on his birthday. We had the Martin Luther King pray, and it all started because he had a dream. Is there any dreamers in the house? And then, 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 then our text would show us that sometimes people will hate you because of your dream. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I have a dream. It was Dr. Martin Luther King's dream that allowed and caused him to lose his life. But I'm not talking about Dr. King today, but I want to give a footnote there because he had a dream. You know, Obama had a dream. He had a dream that he was going to become the president. And then do you all know because he had a dream, the dream came in to reality. You all remember a few Sundays ago, Stalin had a dream as a little kid. He saw Ruth standing over there singing in the old sanctuary. He called one of her friends and said, who is that girl singing? Now Stalin dreamed for many years that he was going to marry Ruth as his wife. And you see now he even chased her in his dream. And you see the reality? Years later, they have three wonderful kids, all because he chased after his dream. Is there any dream chasers in the house? Now, you have to understand that in our text today, that Joseph had a dream. Joseph was Jacob's son. Joseph had 11 other brothers. Joseph was one of uh, Rachel's son, Jacob's favorite wife. And in Jacob's being Rachel's favorite wife, then Jacob had a son named Joseph. And after Joseph was born, there was one other by the name of Benjamin. And what happened was Benjamin had allowed after his birth, Rachel to die. But for some reason, there was favoritism in the family. And now I know that there's no favoritism in this house in any of your children. All right, I knew that y'all would get quiet right there, but there are some parents that would favor children over other children. And one thing that you don't know is when you favor children over children, you cause distress, heartaches on the other child. You don't have to preach with me, but it's okay because some of y'all favor the other one because they look like the other one. Some of you favor the other one because the other one calls you baby mama drama. I knew I wouldn't get no amen right there. So what happened was, that some of y'all over the head, but some of y'all know what baby mama drama is and daddy mama drama. And so what, because there was some real baby mama drama going on in that family. Because Jacob had a few concubines, he had a few wives, and he had slaved for one and was tricked into the other one. So it caused some baby mama drama. And so the story goes on to say that when Joseph was 17 years old, that Joseph had a dream. Can I read you what his dream said? His dream says in Genesis, the 37th chapter, and it says, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him, yet 
the even more. Now, the, one of the reasons that they hated him was because his father loved him more than he loved the rest of them. His father had made him a robe that was so laid out. You, what is some of the latest suit? The Armadi or some of the newest suits that's on the job? I'm telling you, if you would have been back there with Joseph, you would have said, Joseph, I like that robe. And so it had caused some family problems in there because Jacob had gave that robe to Joseph and because Joseph was his favorite son, his brothers had already envied him. So now he sleep and he has this dream and he has this dream and look what he says. And he said unto them, here I pray you this dream which I've dreamed. He says, for behold, we were after binding uh, shafts, meaning the grain and we were the wheat in the fields and lo, his wheat arose. So now, understand this, this young 17 year old, he comes in, he says, you know what? He says to all of his other brothers, he says, you know, what I need to tell you is that in this dream, I found out that mine is going to grow up, yours are going to fall, and you're going to come and worship me. And he began to get troubled. His father even tried to tell him to be quiet. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, some dreams, you just want to keep to yourself. But some dreams, you can't keep to yourself. So God had a plan. Look at your name, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God had a plan. So it was, he had planned for us that we can only begin to imagine. We see things in formulas plan that we think would be wonderful, but God has something far more special for us than we could ever imagine. A look at the life of Joseph illustrates the truth Joseph's life demonstrates four facts that you will find true as you journey your faith with me this morning. God has cleared it for you. If you remember these truths, then no matter how dark the clouds, how depressed the circumstances, or how bad the crisis is, you will always be aware of the fact that God has something special for you. Do you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. God has something special special just for you you know on last Sunday I was out looking at the audience and I thought you know many times I only preach to those that are sitting on the first two rows but I need to preach to that person that was on their way to church that got into an argument I need to talk to that person that got a financial problem I need to talk to that person where it seemed like all hell is breaking loose from the left the right the south the north the east I need to talk to that single mother, that single father that's going through just to tell you today that God has something special just for you. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, God has something special just for you. So look at the one on the other side and tell him, say God has something special just for you. There's a special person inside of you. The Bible says in 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Today is your day for you to know that God has something special. Joseph was different. If you read the story of his life, it is plain to see that Joseph stood out from his brothers in his commitment. His character and his clothes, as a result, his brothers hated him. Would you just shout to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, neighbor. being different neighbor. can get you in trouble but be different or tell your neighbor say be different. be different and being different in is socially unacceptable because we have this thing everyone else is doing it so why don't we do it the secret of popularity is not being conformed to this world but everyone feels and believes that if you want to be popular then you got to be like everyone else the world tells us to get along you must go along Would you tell your neighbor say neighbor I don't need to go alone just to get along. You have to be yourself because you are special. And not only that, this is the siren cry of the world. Everybody wants to fit in. Everybody wants to be accepted. But you are special. We just look at your name and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You are special. Being different is okay. While the world calls us to conform, the Bible gives us a different message. The Bible warns us against conforming. Romans 12 and 1 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your... This literally means do not let the world press you into their mold. Yes. Would you just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor and say, Neighbor, yes. take off, take off. The, world's the world's mold and be yourself. 
Be, being different because you are different. Can I say that one more time? Be different because you are different. Just look at your neighbor. I don't know why you sit by him. If you say, man, here he go again. <laughs> look at your neighbor, take your neighbor and say, neighbor, be different because you are different. You are different, so you need to be different. The main reason why you should be different is because you are. God made you an individual. DNA, and you don't have to be conformed to the crowd. A lot of people, I was talking to this 15-year-old girl the other day, sitting at the table. She was a runaway. She thought she was tough. She told me, I started having sex at 13. I didn't did marijuana, smoke weed, and I'm drinking. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? You're not going to have to tell me to be, fit in that you got to do all of that. I said, your problem is you're looking for love in all the wrong places. So you see what happens when you're not being yourself and you feel that you're not loved and you don't know that you're special, then you'll do whatever it takes to find love and then you'll find love in all the wrong places. But you have to be different because you are different. There are those who are, who are like whatever crowd they get around. They worship with the saints and they groove with the sinners. You know I wouldn't get an amen right there because now you're here with all the saints. You're going to act like you ain't a sinner. This ought not be so. I shouldn't come to church on Sunday and be quiet as a mice. But go to that party on Saturday and be louder. Daniel, at the age of 17, he took a stand that he was not going to be social into that crowd. He chose to be different. As a result, God was able to bless his life and get great glory from Daniel. All I'm saying is that you don't have to fit into anyone else's mold to be accepted. The only person you have to please is God. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, being different is okay. If you are living your life in a manner that pleases him, then you are living the right kind of life. Never sell out to this world or to the people who want to make you look like them. Would you just look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, thank God I don't look like you and you don't look like me. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. Make up your mind that you are settled for nothing less than the approval of God upon your life. After all, he made you, he loved you, he died for you, and if you are saved, he saved you. You're going to heaven to live with him for eternity. Realize and recognize that you are an individual and that you are unique among all the people who have ever been created that you've ever came in contact with or you will ever live. God made you special and your duty is to live for him. Point number two, trying to be cool and stay with the paper. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. There, is there is a special plan just for you. You ought to get excited about that one. Because not only are you special, but there's a special plan just for you. Go with me to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's look at that, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. And look what he says. He says in Jeremiah 29 and 11, he says, for I know the thoughts that I have towards, that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. To look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I already know in the end I'm successful. So if you know in the end you're successful, then you have to know that you're going to go through some trials in order to see the end results. Look at what he says. The verse tells us that Joseph dreamed a dream. In this dream, the Lord revealed the future to Joseph. In this dream, God showed Joseph that one day all of the resources, all of the grain and all the rulers of this world would bow down at Joseph's feet. God has special plans for the life of Joseph 
And he had a special plan for your life as well. Sadly, many people, get this point here, many people lack the faith or the vision to find out what God's plan is for them. Can I say that one more time? Many of us lack the faith or the vision to find out what God's plan is for us. In order to be successful, in order to allow yourself to know that God can make a way, then you have to know the plans that God has for you. Can I read this one more time? And if that's your Bible, you ought to write in it. Look at what he says in Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, for I know. Can you say that with me? I say, I know the thoughts. See, what happens is, is he knows the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Now look what he says. He says, I know the thoughts. And now he says, thoughts of what? Peace. So what's the opposite of peace? All right. So now, if you're in evil or you're in war, is that of God? It's because look at what he says. He says, for I know the thoughts for you, and I know the thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Yeah. I have a great end awaiting me. There is something that God wants you to do. He has something for you to do that no one else can do. I like whoever said this. They said, if you want something different, then you have to do something different. Yes. Yes. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Amen. If you want something different, you have to do something different. Look at what God does. He wants to work inside of you, through you and around you in a very unique and special manner. He has something only you can do. And it would not be done unless you do it. God has something specially for you. Now, what would it look like if I went out there and got on the basketball court against Michael Jordan? You all would laugh. Because you would say, no, now what do I look like now? Now, mind you, I'm driving down the road and I pulled over and I bought some golf clubs. That's when Tiger Woods was just, I mean, Tiger was his own. I wanted to be like Tiger, so I bought some golf clubs. But you know what I did? I never went to the golf court and used those golf clubs. They're still in the garage. It's not my calling. Golfing is not my calling. Basketball is not my calling. Referee is not my calling. I often see that my brother-in-law who's here, he's a referee. And his wife tried to be a referee because he's a referee. Now, she's not as good a referee as he is, but she wanted to be like him because she was married to him, so she thought she would go get a black and white shirt and be called a referee. But what do you know? You have to stay in your calling. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you have to stay in your calling. All right, let's bring it in the house. What do I look like going over there trying to play the organ? He didn't call me to play the organ. I'm here to preach the gospel. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you have a job to do, so do it. You might as well know up front that there are those around you who will try and stop you from completing what God has want for you to do. You might as well know that. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, smiling faces tell lies. Notice how Joseph's brothers reacted to him. Look at the what it says in Genesis 37. Genesis 37, verse number 19. Look at that in the book. So they said to one another, Behold, the dreamer comes. What do people say about you when they see you coming? What do they say? Ah, oh, you couldn't tell me, huh? So, all right. There will always be those who lack the faith and vision and will tell you that your dream it's unconceivable in practice or impossible to achieve. But I want to tell you today that with God, all things are possible. Would you look at your neighbor a few more times and tell them, say, with God, all things are possible. 
It was the truth that God had a plan for Joseph that sustained him during the time when he was a slave in Egypt. The story goes on to tell us in Genesis the 37th chapter, then jumping over to Genesis the 38th and the 39th chapter, that Joseph's father has sent him to check on the ten brothers because he had kept Benjamin close to him in fear of losing him. And the Bible goes on to say that as Joseph had got close to his brothers, that his brother says, here come the dreamer. And they said, let's kill him. Now you got to understand this. There is some people that would like to see you dead. Can I slow down a minute? Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. There are some people that will get along with you just because. And they don't care anything about you. And that's the way Joseph's brothers were. Joseph's brothers didn't care anything about Joseph. And Joseph goes in and he goes and the Bible says that a man sees him wandering and he says, I'm looking for my brothers. And they said that they're over in Dothus. And says that as Joseph goes over in Dothus, his brothers say to them, here comes the dreamer. And they decided to kill him. Now, you know what? Let me just pause here and tell you, they were capable of killing Joseph. You know how you would just say, oh, we ought to kill that person. They were not just talking. They were serious. Because they, in the early latter part of the text, they had a sister who was raped by one and they decided that they were going to actually circumcise all the men. And the text says that they killed all the men on the third day. So they didn't have a problem with killing somebody. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. They were going to kill him. But Joseph's older brother Reuben decided to say, now wait a minute, we should not kill him Let's put him off in the well or the stern. And the text goes on to say that they decided to put him off in the stern. And Reuben went to get something to eat because I just think, and I'm just thinking out loud to myself, I think that Reuben was coming back to get him outside of the well when the rest of them was gone. But the text says that while Reuben was not was gone, that they had decided to take Joseph and sell him over to the Ishmaelites. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, they sold him to slavery. And then the text says that when they took him to the Ishmaelite, they sold him. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver, and they decided that they were going to take his coat of many colors, and they took a goat, and they killed the goat, and they put the blood on side of him, and then they took the coat to the father, and, said, and the father mourned and said to them, I will mourn for the rest of the days of my life. Now understand this. The father actually was in greed, but they were in guilt. Can I work with that text? They were in, the father was grieved. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I would rather grieve than to be in guilt. Now he grieved because of a loss. They were in guilt because of what they done. There's some things that we do that we ought to be guilty about and ask God to forgive us. You are, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. There's a special person inside of you. And there's a special plan for you. But I also need to tell you that there's a special problem just for you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. There is a special problem just for you. I remember I got saved and I thought everything was going to be okay. I thought everything was going to be all right. I tell you, I've had some challenges. I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. I've had some struggles. I've had some struggles that I've won, and I've had some struggles that I've lost. Can you all be honest with yourself? And tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, there's a special problem just for you. Look at what the text says. The life of Joseph is one of the greatest problems and trials. In verse 18, his brothers conspired against him. In verse 21, they threw him in the pits. In verse 28, that's God calling. He was sold as a slave. In chapter 39, he's falsely accused of rape. In chapter 40, he's thrown in prison. Joseph was forsaken by his family, forgotten by his friends, and frustrated by his failures. Please remember that all things that happened to Joseph were just part of God's plan for your life. Would you look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. This is a part of God's life 
what I'm going through is just a test. Look at your other neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. This is a hard pill to swallow, but it's still true. Can I tell you what's a hard pill to swallow, but it's still true? Life is just unfair. Any of y'all ever said that? Any of you ever just felt like life was so unfair? You know that little kid that had to lose the parent? They said life is just unfair. Spouse that lose a loved one or another spouse, life is just not fair. Lady going down the road on 46th in Cincinnati, lost her child in an automobile. She says, life is just not fair. But to a good neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you're right. Life is not fair. But God is able to see you through. If the Lord of glory comes to the earth and was crucified, then what makes you think that life would treat you fairly? Why did these things happen to a young man who was guilty of nothing more than obeying the will of God? The answer is found in Genesis 50 and 20. Would you travel there with me? Genesis 50 and 20. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You have to see this in the text. Once again, if that's your Bible, this is a good one to mark up and circle. I want to back up to verse number 19. And Joseph said unto them, let me fast forward the text on what happened. There was a famine that had taken place. And in this famine that had taken place, Joseph's father sent them over to Egypt to buy some food. And when they went to buy some food, Joseph recognized that them was his brothers, but they did not recognize Joseph. And so Joseph had sent and told them to go back and get their father. I mean, get there and not, let me not go too far fast, but Joseph told them to go get Benjamin because Joseph wanted to see Benjamin. But when they got back over that way, they had spent the money for the food but the text says that when they got there, the money was still in the bag. And the Bible goes on to say that when they got there, they began to eat, they ran out, and they sent back and they brought Benjamin back with them. And when they brought Benjamin back with them, the text says that they put the cup in Benjamin's bag. So Benjamin was not, any Bible readers in the house? Anybody ever went to BTU or midweek and you realize that those Bible stories are true? And the Bible tells us that in the text that he put the cup into the bag with Benjamin because Benjamin was his biological brother and because Benjamin was the one that he was really concerned about all of them but he had a special love for Benjamin because Benjamin came out of the wound of Rachel that died and given birth to Benjamin. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, what the enemy meant for bad, God will turn it around for the good. Now look at what he says. He says, and Joseph said unto them, this is now they're all together. He said unto them, fear not, for I am in the place of God. Now how can you be in the place of God when all hell is breaking loose? How can you be in the place of God when it seems like if it ain't one thing, it's another? Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say neighbor, right where you're at, you're in the place of God. Can I just go back just for a moment? I want you to see something real quick. Go with me back to Genesis 39. Genesis 39. You have to see this. You have to see this. I want to help somebody today. I want to help that person that's in the middle of the church today. I don't want to reach those in the front. I want to go back. Is that all right? Look at what he says. Verse number 39, verse number 2. Would you read that with me, just that very first one? It says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Look at that. Would you say that one more time with me? And the Lord was with Joseph. Now, as Joseph was going through his trial, God was right there. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, why are you looking for God? He's right there with you. Would you look and tell the other person on the other side? Say, why are you looking for God? He's right there with you. Look at what Joseph says in Genesis 50, going back to Genesis 50, verse number 20. I just read 19. Let's go to verse number 20. Look at what he says. He says, but as for you, 
you thought evil against me, but God meant it for the... Let's say that again. Can y'all say that with me? Because I just believe that somebody's going to catch it when I say it this time. But as for you, you thought it evil against me, but God meant it unto the... So what happened was, what they thought was evil towards Joseph... God was only preparing Joseph in order to make a way. Can I tell you why God bless you? He bless you so you can bless others. Can I say that one more time? God blesses you so you can bless others. You know why you got that gift? You don't sing yourself happy. You sing to help somebody else happy. Huh? You don't serve to make you happy. You serve to make someone else happy. Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, the reason God gave you that gift is so you can use it to serve somebody else. That's why God bless you in order to bless. You don't believe it? You die today, and all that you got, someone else is going to fight over it. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you have a gift. And God wants you to use it for someone else. Even in all this story, this really is not about Joseph. This really is all about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promise that God made. Can I go back to that? Genesis, you've got to see this one more time. I'm going to go back. This is off on the footnote side. Genesis 39, verse number 2. Look at what he says. And this is in the beginning of the trial. It says in verse number 39, chapter 39, verse number 2. And it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. And he was a what? Some translations say successful. Others says prosperous. It says, and he says, and he was a successful or prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. So even while he was there, he was still yet prospering. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying wherever you at, you ought to be prosperous and successful as long as God is with you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, you are successful because God is with you. In the Old Testament, let me go to Romans 8 because some of y'all would say, we haven't in the Old Testament. Go to Romans with me. Romans the 8th chapter, Romans 8, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, then the book of Romans. Look at Romans the 8th chapter. And I know that normally I would jump right into 8, 28, but I want you to see 26. Romans 8, verse 26. Likewise, are your pages turning and I'll be still? Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. Amen. And if you can see the word, and you can hear the word, then you increase your faith. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. I feel better because I know the Lord is with me as I'm going through. Anybody going through something right now? Anybody going through something right now? Let me tell you something. It's okay to go through what you're going through. Just know God is with you. Man, I, 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 you know what? I could really do an invitation call and all of y'all that did not raise your hand that was looking at the other person I really need to pray for you. Because all of us go through trials and tribulation. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, it's okay to go through as long as you know God is going through with you. Look at what he says in, in Romans 8, 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our what? Infirmities. Anybody got another translation? Our weakness. Anybody weak? Huh? So look what it says. It says, likewise, the Spirit, who's the Spirit? God is the Spirit, also help us our weakness, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself make intercession. I don't know about you, but that's enough for me to shout about, to know that God makes intercessors for me. When I am weak and I can't do it by myself, God does it for me. All right? No, I don't know about you, but I can really get happy just on that text. Because when I'm weak, God is strong. 
He makes intercessors for me to help me overcome my weakness. I don't care how strong you think you are. You have some weakness. And when you think you've overcome that and don't recognize that, then it overcomes you. Look what he says. The spirit itself maketh intercessions for us with groans which cannot be uttered. Look at verse number 37. And he that searches the heart. Look at what he says in 27. He says, he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the what? Born, look at that word right there. He makes intercessions for the will of God in your life. So he makes intercessors for you to walk worthy and prosperous for God. So while you're going through, you can shout that I know the Lord will make a way. While you're going through, you can say I will look to the hills from which cometh all of my help. While you're going through, you should have a peace that passes all understanding. Because the text says, because he makes intercessors according to the will of God. All right, I'm glad that you looked at me like that. Go to Jeremiah 29 11 one more time. Look at that one more time. We tying both of those in. Jeremiah, what I say? 29 and 11. Let's look at that. And keep your hand on Romans. Keep your hand on Romans because we're going to put them together. Jeremiah 29 and 11. It is right here. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's look at it. Read that with me. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. Go back to Romans. And look at Romans, the latter part of verse number 27, chapter 8. And he prays according to the will of what? Of God. He says in Jeremiah also, for he knew you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. So God has plans just for you. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. I, understand I understand that what I'm going through is working for the good. Look at what he says, Romans 8, now 28. And he says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that loveth God. How many of you love God that's going through? How many of you love God and you're going through? I'm just here to give you some good news today. Because you love God and because you're going through, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Look at what he says. Says, and we know that all things work together for the good. Now you all help me, and I know I got some older saints in the house. If I was to take a spoonful of grease and some flour, and I would knead that grease in the flour, now the grease itself would probably hurt me, and the flour itself would probably dry me out. But if I take the grease and the flour, and I begin to knead the grease in the flour, I'm not talking about Crisco, now you gotta be old school to put Crisco, you need some lard in it, and you take it and you knead it down, and you put a little baking soda in it, and then you put some milk in it, not too much. Now, I, and some of y'all old women are looking at me like, what he making? You, you can't get this kind of biscuits in a can. Huh? Huh? See, some, now you young women didn't know that you got to have flour to make biscuits. Huh? But look at what the text, I'm talking, I'm going to show you. It says, and we know the whole thing. Now look at this. Crisco, baking soda, and milk separate of the Crisco could hurt me. But if I put it all together, and I begin to knead it, and I begin to press it down and fold it, and then if I take this cup, because you know, they, back then they didn't have all those fancy things that they got. So Ken, they would take it and dip the glass in flour, twist it, and then take the glass and put it on the dough. And, and then what they would do is, they would take it and put it on a cookie sheet or a pan or grease and stick it in the oven. And then that's how you come up with buttermilk biscuits. 
So how do you come up with a saint living a life for Christ? You got to be needed in life. You got to be pressed down in life. You got to be cut out in life. You got to be put in heat in the oven of your trials and tribulations to know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. To know that you got to put on the whole armor of God to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You got to know that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but to the one that endure to the end. Can you never say neighbor? All things work together for the good. What the enemy meant for bad, God is getting ready to turn it around. Because what they meant for bad for Jesus, they marched him up the hill called Gagata. They put him in a barrel too. Laid him there all night Friday. Laid him there all day Saturday. But it began to work for the good because while he was in the grave, he said he was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquities. And by his stripes, you are healed. Then they put him down in the tomb and put a rock on top of the rock. I'm trying to tell you that all things work together for the good if you can just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, hold on to God's unchanging hand. The woman spent all she had, but she said it's working for my good. Cause if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I know that I know that I know that I will be made whole. Joseph began, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, say neighbor, all things work together for the good how do you know all things work together for the good because my bible tells me in psalms 37 that the good the, the, the lord orders the steps the good man's steps are ordered by the lord tell your neighbor say neighbor i've had some good days i've had some bad days but i can't complain because my steps are ordered by the lord Anybody know that God will order your steps? Anybody know God will keep you in perfect peace? I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. I'm so glad that the songwriter says, trouble don't last always. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy cometh in the morning. Can I talk to that woman that went through a divorce? Yeah, he may have walked out on you, but you ought to shout anyhow because God has to have him to relieve so he can bless you with something better. Can I talk to that person that's didn't lost their job? Can I tell you the reason that you lost that job is so God can bless you with another job. Can I talk to that parent that got away with child? Keep on praying, keep on trusting, keep on believing, because I know that my God will make a way out of no way. Just in case, can I talk to the alcoholic for a moment? I need to tell you that God will make a way out of no way. Can I talk to the person that's having sex and got an addiction can i tell you god will god will make a way out of no way can i talk to the person that didn't lost their parents can i tell you that god will be a comforter to you in the midst of your storms look at your neighbor tell your neighbor say neighbor god has something special just for you yes he does he has something special just for you you think just because you're going through that you gotta throw in the towel but let me tell you for the person that may have had three divorce it's okay keep on trusting god 
He will make a way because he said that thou confess thou sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Let me tell you how I know that you're special in closing. You're special because Romans 8 says, or 5 and 8 or 8 and 5, says for while we were yet in sin, Christ died just for you. You may feel, and I tell you, I wish I would have came with some flour and a need I would need right now. Can you picture me taking the Crisco, cut it in the flour? You may be going through right now a situation. And if you need, if you, anybody that knows how to cook, you know the more you need it, the more it balls up. Some of y'all been doing good. And see, like the more you do, the more hell you catching. See, like the more good you do, the more trouble you have to face. Can I tell you to keep on? Keep it on. Because in the, in the midst of kneading it up, you got to pour the milk in it. And when you pour the milk in it, it allows it to begin gooey. And it begins to form together. Can I tell you what? The Holy Spirit is being poured into your life today. He's bringing it all to good. It's all good because it's all God. Whatever you're going through, wherever you're at, I want to meet that person that feels like there is no hope. I want to meet that person to where it feels like that they're at the end of the rope. I met a guy that never met me before. He was doing some work. And he looked over at me as the deacons are coming and he kind of chuckled with it. He said, Scott, I know somebody that know you. And I was like, yeah. He said, yeah, they went to school with you. And they said, boy, I wouldn't want to meet you when you was in school. I looked at him and I said, yeah, God is an awesome God. He specializes. God is a God that can take your life and change your life for the good. And maybe you've been good and someone else has done you wrong. Look at what Joseph does. He feeds his brothers in spite of. You have to be like Joseph. You got to be like Jesus. You have to love in spite of. Thank you for joining the broadcast. We hope it's been a blessing to you. And uh, if you have any prayer requests or prayer concerns or prayer needs, please feel free to contact us on the information below. And once again, thank you for joining the broadcast. We hope that's been a blessing to you. of the cross. We'd like to ask Jordan to come up and stand so the people can see Jordan and get his rewards. Jordan got uh, six and under 43, third place. And then the big, I think you may get some help to get this. This feels like it's over 43 pounds. So I'm asking his mother to come and help him with this. Amen. So we would like to present this to Jordan with his mother carrying it to the 2011 Cliff Clean Tulsa National, six and under, 43 pounds, third place. Amen. Wonderful heavy eagle.
Let's give Jordan another round of applause. Amen. Every Christian ought to stand up and testify. For God I live, for God I die. You ought to clap your hands and pat your feet. Even though you're walking along the street. Now if you got it, show some sign. Mm -hmm. Listen. You ought to fall down on your knees and pray. Say, Lord, I thank you for one more day. It's mighty nice to go to God and kneel. I wouldn't have religion that I couldn't feel. Now, if you got it, show some sign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every Christian ought to stand up and testify. For God I live, for God I die. You ought to clap your hands and pat your feet Even though you're walking along the street Now if you got it, show some sign It's been a while It's been a while You may not oh. I may not I be able to sing like I said hi the Lord And he heard he And he died, he died Well, I want the world to know that I know the man If I couldn't say a word, I'd just wave my hand Now if you got it, show some sign Well, you may not be able I may not I may be able to preach like Paul I said I I love the Lord And he heard He heard my cry And he died, died Well I want the world to know that I know the man If I couldn't say a word I'd just wave my hand Now if you got it Show some sign Well You may not oh, I may not. I said, 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 I Late one Saturday night, he heard. Early one Sunday morning, he heard. Late one Saturday night, he heard. And then he died. Well, I want the world to know that I know the man. If I couldn't say a word, I'd just wave my hand. Now, if you got it, show some sign. You may not I may be able oh, to sing like angels I may not I may be able to preach like a I said I I love the Lord Said I I love the Lord Said I I love the Lord Said I, I love the Lord Do you really love him? I love the Lord, I love the Lord. Do you really love him? I love the Lord, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. He heard I'm a cry He heard I'm a cry He heard I'm a cry He heard <laughs> he heard me on my cry. He heard me on my cry. He heard me on my cry. Early one Sunday he morning, he heard. Late one Saturday night, he heard. Early one Sunday morning, he heard. Late one Saturday night, he heard. Early one Sunday morning, he heard. Late one Saturday night, he heard. Early one Sunday morning, he heard. Late one Saturday night, he heard, and then he died. Well, I want the world to know that I know the man. If I couldn't say a word, I just wave my hand. Now, if you got it, I said, I said, if you got it, you ought to show some sign. Show some sign. Show some sign. Show some sign. 
Show some sign. Show some sign. Show some sign. time religion show some sign if I can't do anything I can wave my hand clap my hand how many of y'all can show some sign today got old time religion amen amen amen, amen. 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 God is an awesome God amen Standing, open your Bibles to Genesis the 37th chapter that's the very first book in the Bible Genesis chapter 37 Genesis chapter 37 amen Genesis chapter 37 amen amen Genesis chapter 37 as you're standing with allow those that's going to children's church to be excused those that are 11 and under 11 and under 11 and under 11 and under amen Amen. 11 and under, as you're opening your Bibles to Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, and then also Corinthians, the second Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verse number 7. Amen. We're going to read both of those passages of Scripture. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 37, verse 5, and second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Genesis chapter 37, Genesis chapter 37, and it reads, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Once again, let me draw your attention while your Bibles are still open to first, uh, Genesis chapter 37, verse 5. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Heavenly Father God, I thank you that I may decrease so you can increase. God, I want to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, because you are so worthy to be praised. God, I thank you right now, God, that you would get all the glory, God. I thank you, God, that we would have an ear to hear what thus says the Lord. God, I thank you right now, God, that as we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, that you would have your way in today's message, God. And God, I want to say thank you right now, God, that I continue to decrease so you can increase. And God, we want to be careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Honor in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, a journey of faith. As we deal with this text again today from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, and as he begins to let us know, the writer Paul, that it's walk by faith and not by sight, and I'm giving a cross-reference scripture of Genesis, the 37th chapter, beginning with the 37th 